What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and I want you to start by turning back the clock. Think back to the days when rock and metal were at their peak, like the 90s and early 2000s, when bands like Nirvana, Green Day, Korn, Blink-182, and Limp Bizkit were all over the radio and MTV, and festivals like Lollapalooza and Ozfest were killing it every summer. That was over 20 years ago, but if you look at the headlines on the metal news sites or the lineups of rock festivals, you might think it's still 2004 because in a lot of ways, nothing has changed. It's literally almost all the same bands. And to be clear, that is no knock on any of the bands. I think those are all great artists, but it does reveal what I think is a huge problem with the culture of rock and metal, that it's become a traditionalist genre that's almost entirely focused on the past, which is a huge problem because in order to stay relevant, we need fresh blood, new artists, new sounds, and most importantly, new fans. And based on the way things are going, I'm really not seeing much of that in rock which honestly makes me pretty worried about the future of the genre. And in this video, I will explain exactly why this is happening and what we can do about it. But first, if you haven't, please check me out on Twitch. I'm streaming twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific. And there's a link to that in the description of this video. But first, today's sponsor is public.com, which is an investing app where you can invest in stocks, ETFs, and crypto with any amount of money. And what I really like about public as somebody who is really interested in investing in personal finance is that it helps people become better investors. I joined public and if you want to see what trends I follow, just search for at Finn McKenty in the app. You can also follow other investors and share ideas. People like Phil DeFranco, Graham Stephan, I'm a big fan of his, Shelby Church, and thousands more who are on the app. On public, you can trade thousands of stocks, ETFs, and crypto, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Doge, Shiba Inu, and more. And there are no commissions on standard stock trades. Plus, public does not sell your trades to market makers like so many other investment apps do. They route all the trades directly to the exchanges. So if you wanna check out public, you'll get a free stock worth three to $1,000 when you go to public.com slash punk rock or hit the link in the description and create an account today. Once again, make sure you go to public.com slash punk rock to get a free stock worth from three to $1,000. All you got to do is click the link in the description of this video. Now, before I talk about the big picture, as far as what's happening here, let me first give you some examples. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. Since it is festival season, let's start there. And if you look at the big rock festivals, you'll see a lot of the same headliners pop up at almost all of them. Breaking Benjamin, Shinedown, Corn, Disturbed, Mudvayne, Three Days Grace, Nine Inch Nails. Like it's literally straight out of 2002. But it's not just those like big red state rock festivals. It's true pretty much across all the different subgenres of rock and metal. For example, the When We Were Young Festival, which is very clear clearly aimed at the elder emo nostalgia kind of crowd with My Chemical Romance, Paramore, AFI, The Used, Avril Lavigne, and Jimmy Eat World as just part of the lineup. And it's even true for the more underground obscure stuff like Maryland Death Fest, which if you look at the flyer, like honestly, no joke, literally looks like it's from 1991. And again, that's not criticizing any of the artists. I think all the bands that I just mentioned are fantastic. I'm just saying it is what it is. Now, as a point of comparison, put that up against a hip hop festival like Rolling Loud, and you'll see that the headliners are Nicki Minaj, ASAP Rocky, and Future, who are a solid 10 years younger than the artists headlining most of those rock festivals. And then when you get kind of the next level down to like, I guess the not quite headliners at Rolling Loud, you see artists like Lil Baby, Ski Mask, and 21 Savage who are all still in their 20s. And on the one hand, I think this kind of shows how loyal rock fans are because they will continue to support a band that they love for decades, which is most definitely a good thing. But on the other hand, it kind of makes me say, shouldn't we be developing the next generation of artists? Do we really want those same headliners to be at the top of the festivals forever for decade after decade? How long does it take before a new artist is allowed to take that position? Like, is it going to be 20 years before Spirit Box is allowed to headline a festival? And if you look at the playlists on satellite radio, again, it's kind of the same story. Sirius XM Octane is still playing Godsmack, Disturbed, and Papa Roach in regular rotation. And again, those are great bands, but is that really who we want carrying the torch for metal in 2022? 
And what's really important to understand here is that as much as we may want to blame the festival promoters or the radio program directors for this, it's not their fault. Their job is to give the audience what they want. And what rock fans mostly want seems to be legacy artists because these promoters know exactly what would happen. Like if they did put a bunch of newer artists on as headliners at these festivals, they would go out of business. Because the honest to God truth is, it's sad to see, but rock fans are just no longer welcoming of new sounds like they used to be. And I know some of you are already wanting to push back on that statement, but compared today to the 90s or the 2000s, when rock was really truly on the cutting edge. Back then, there were tons of new bands doing innovative, forward-thinking stuff who were also selling tons of albums, headlining big tours, and importantly, also earning the respect of rock fans in the media. For example, in the 90s, obviously you had grunge, but also bands like Jane's Addiction, Tool, Fear Factory, and Rollins Band, White Zombie, pioneering the whole like alternative metal thing. Nine Inch Nails was popularizing industrial. Green Day and The Offspring were doing pop punk. There was the ska thing. That I was gonna write, I have yet, but there's still a chance I'm not an open book. And in the late 90s and 2000s, there was also New Metal, Korn, Slipknot, Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, all those bands. And whether you liked New Metal or not, certainly there were a lot of old guard metal people back then that didn't. I think you can still agree that New Metal was definitely something new and fresh. And then later in the 2000s, you had the so-called new wave of American heavy metal with Killswitch, Lamb of God, God Forbid, and Chimera. And of course, what I like to call the mall emo scene with Fall Out Boy, Paramore, my Chemical Romance and Panic at the Disco. And what's important to note here is that these bands weren't just innovative. They were also extremely popular. They were selling millions of albums, getting tons of radio and MTV airplay and headlining festivals like Lollapalooza, Mayhem and Warp Tour. And so my point here is that as recently as 15 or 20 years ago, rock fans and the industry were rewarding innovation, meaning new sounds and new artists. And of course, yes, there was always the old guard complaining that Green Day weren't real punk, that Killswitch weren't real metal, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is that those people were really just a vocal minority that obviously didn't matter in the big picture because all of those bands were massively, massively successful. But these days, unfortunately, it seems to me that that's not really the case anymore. And to be clear, I'm not saying there's no innovation happening in rock anymore because that is definitely not true. There is innovation and creativity happening. My point is that it's just not embraced by the industry or the fans the way that it was in the 90s or the 2000s. For example, in my opinion, the most interesting thing to happen in the world of alternative music in probably the last 10 years or so was emo rap and trap metal. Artists like Suicide Boys, Ghost Main, Lil Peep, City Morgue, Bones, and all that. Right, yo! As someone who's been listening to this kind of stuff for over 30 years now, I felt like that was one of the most exciting, dynamic, fresh, innovative things to happen in alternative music in a very, very long time. And I was excited to talk about it back when I started this channel four or five years ago. And I did make a lot of videos about it. But if you notice, I kind of stopped talking about that stuff because whenever I would bring it up, I would get all these negative comments. And honestly, it just really wasn't worth dealing with all the hate I would get from rock fans, which is why I've chosen to focus focus more on older music. And to be honest, I don't really love that. I feel like I should be covering more new stuff, but it's clear to me that that's just not what my audience wants. And on the other hand, the new rock artists that are getting attention are generally not doing anything that's especially innovative. The most obvious example here would be Greta Van Fleet, who are kind of one of the bigger breakout artists in rock of this generation. But you know, if you've heard them, you know that they are basically just a Led Zeppelin tribute band. MGK would be another great example. I think he's probably the biggest current rock artist. His last two albums, Mainstream Sellout and Tickets to My Downfall, both went to number one on Billboard, which on the one hand is cool because when is the last time a rock artist his age did that? But the problem is that both of those albums sound straight out of 2003. Yes, it's obviously popular, but there is zero innovation going on there. And I think that that sent a pretty clear message to the scene because in the wake of his success, 
guess. Most of the emo rappers who are doing cool, innovative stuff three to five years ago have kind of made a stylistic shift to doing something similar to what he is, which is basically a less good version of what Blink-182 did 20 years ago. And some of you may be saying, well, hey, wait a minute. What about new bands like Code Orange, Turnstile, Falling in Reverse, or Ghost? Those bands are doing well, right? And yes, they are doing well. And I think that those are all great bands. But think about it. Those bands are all over a decade old now. They are not exactly new. And then there's artists like A Day to Remember and Bring the Horizon who are only now starting to kind of get close to headliner status. But those bands are 20 years old now. And so that's kind of my point is that in rock, a quote unquote newer artist is still 10 years into their career. There's also this dynamic where in order for rock fans to accept a new artist, they have to kind of like kiss the ring of tradition and pay deliberate tribute to the past. For example, look at Post Malone. Rock fans basically ignored him or wrote him off as another one of these face tattoo mumble rappers until he did a song with Ozzy and they found out that he likes Megadeth. And now all of a sudden rock fans think he's great. What do you mean I ain't kind? Just not your kind. Or as another example, Ghost Mane. They pretty much ignored slash hated him for years, even though he was doing stuff that I thought was super cool and innovative and clearly drawing from a lot of rock influences, especially like black metal. But rock fans really wanted nothing to do with him until he switched up his style a couple years ago to doing something that sounds a lot more like Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails. And again, not that that's a bad thing. My point is that rock fans refused to accept him until he kind of walked back and did something that was less innovative and more familiar and tied to the past. And so it's really frustrating for me. Sometimes it feels like the only way a new artist can get the approval of rock fans is to emulate the past and stop doing the thing that made them interesting in the first place. But it's not just the fans here. The entire industry has the same problem of being stuck in the past. The Grammys are maybe the most obvious example of this. Their rock nominees for 2022 included Paul McCartney, ACDC, and Rob Zombie. Respect to all of those artists, but honestly, that list could have come out in 1995 or in the case of Paul McCartney, 1975. And again, are those really the artists that we want representing rock and metal in 2022? Artists and labels are also very resistant to change, meaning that it's been pretty obvious for quite a while now that in terms of the music industry, we live in a new era that pretty much looks nothing like the 90s or even the 2000s. For one, thanks to streaming and playlist culture, albums matter matter much, much less than they used to. And now it's really all about singles. And I understand why a lot of you may not like that because there are certain songs that work well in the context of an album that don't necessarily work well as singles. And there's definitely something to be said for that old school experience of sitting down with like a physical copy of the album, looking at the artwork and the liner notes and listening to it from start to finish as the artist intended. That's how I listened to music a lot when I was a kid, so I get it. But for better or worse, that that is just not the world we live in. You can yell and scream and push against the river all you want, but that's just reality. It's clear as day, and yet most rock artists refuse to adapt. Although I do have to give credit to forward-thinking rock artists like Bring Me the Horizon and Ronnie Radke of Falling in Reverse, who have been emphasizing singles for a while now, and you can see the success that they've had with that. And as far as music discovery goes, a lot of artists and rock fans are very focused on this paradigm of radio, even though clearly we have moved on from that a very long time ago. When it comes to music discovery, clearly TikTok is the most important platform and it's not even close. TikTok has over 1 billion active users and 75% of those users say that they use the app to discover new music, which means that is over 750 million users looking to discover new music on the platform. By comparison, Sirius XM has 34 million total subscribers, meaning that TikTok as a music discovery platform is literally 20 times bigger than Sirius Serious XM. Back in 2020, TikTok themselves reported that the platform created 90 singles that hit the Billboard Top 100, five number one hits, and 70 artists got signed to major label deals from TikTok. It's helped newer artists like Lorna Shore blow up. You've seen what it's done for older artists like Kate Bush or Metallica or Fleetwood Mac. 
It's incredibly powerful, and yet for the most part, rock artists ignore TikTok, or at worst, they're like actively fighting against it. A lot of rock fans and artists are also still clinging to physical media, while the rest of the world moved on to streaming years and years ago. And for those of you who say that streaming doesn't pay artists, that is really not quite correct. Spotify alone has paid out over $20 billion, I think $7 billion last year alone, which is 25% of overall music industry revenue just from Spotify. And yet all you hear from the rock side of the music industry is how terrible streaming is. It's also clear that the current music landscape favors solo artists over bands for a couple reasons. For one, kind of most obviously, it just makes more financial sense, right? Like you don't have to split the money four or five ways. But maybe more importantly, in an era in which artists have to be content creators as much as they are musicians, it's much easier for artists to connect with one individual person than a whole band. The modern pop punk scene is a great example of that with almost all the breakout artists being individuals, not bands. And again, for the most part, rock fans and artists push back on this and insist that if it's a solo solo artist rather than an entire band that it's somehow not real music. Which brings me to kind of the larger point of this video, which is that the root of all of this is in a very negative, self-defeating mindset called rockism. I'm not actually sure who came up with that term, but this quote is a good synopsis of exactly what rockism is. Rockism means idolizing the authentic old legend or underground hero while mocking the latest pop star, lionizing punk while barely tolerating disco, loving the live show and hating the music video, extolling the growling performer while hating the lip sinker. And rockism has pretty much always been around, but it seems like in the last 10 years or so, it's completely taken over rock and metal to the point where now the entire culture of rock is about slavish devotion to tradition in a way that honestly, I never thought I would see. These days, rockism isn't just a part of rock culture, it is rock culture. The rock scene now actively rejects new artists, new sounds, and new ideas that don't conform to the rockest ideas idea of how things quote unquote should be. So why exactly is this a problem? Well, for one, to be just completely blunt, the current festival headliners and artists who dominate the headlines in the rock media are not going to be here forever. They're getting old. Metallica, Korn, and Disturbed are all in their 50s and they could retire any day. Not to mention bands like the Scorpions who are still headlining a lot of festivals in Europe and they're in their 70s. And if there isn't a new generation to replace them, well, what happens? Do all the festivals just go out of business because they don't have headliners? I mean, honestly, yeah, I think that is what would happen. So what you see is that rock is way, way less popular with young people than when I was a teenager in the 90s. And it makes sense, right? I mean, most 14 year olds are not gonna identify with somebody who is their parents' age or older, but they don't really have a lot of options because there just aren't very many young rock artists who are getting the support of the industry. The industry is too busy promoting another festival with theory of a dead man or social distortion headlining instead of developing young artists. And so the question is, is, what do we do about it? Well, the simple answer is vote with your dollars and your clicks. Step outside your comfort zone and support new artists who are doing something different. Don't reject it just because it looks or sounds different than what you liked in high school. And if you've tried and you just genuinely don't like any new artists, you know, that's okay too. You are not obligated to like anything. But at the very least, don't be a hater. Don't be like those guys all up in the comments on Loudwire's Facebook page talking shit on absolutely everything that's new. Because if we let rock and metal continue to be controlled by those people, the future of the genre is not looking bright. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. And I would like to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. Patrons get all my podcasts a week early. I do giveaways. And there's also a way to have me review your music. All you need to do is join at the $10 and up level. Every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review your music, artwork, or anything else, just drop it in the comments of that post. Then I will review it live on Twitch and post it on Patreon for everyone to see. So if that sounds cool, hit the link in the description of this video. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.